Yes, welcome back to the South Australian Sports Show. Thanks for staying with us. Poppy, every now and then South Australia comes up with some great ideas. Yes, they do. And we've had some great sportsmen. We've tossed around the word great. We'll talk about that later. Our next guest, Rod Jamison, of course, former Crows. He was actually a leading goal kicker in 1991 and then went to full back. So one of those players that was versatile joins us. Jamo, how are you? Phil, Poppy, good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, mate, your new role, you business... Busy, yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have him on, should we? I know. Business director, <laughs> I'm, trying mate. My, I'm trying to hold my stomach and I can't. <laughs> you need to hide under the counter, yeah. mate. Business Director of Childhood Cancer. Can you tell us a little bit about where that's all at? Yeah, look, I got involved, Phil, eight years ago when I was uh, in another environment for work and um, our president's son relapsed at the start of 2014. So I put my hand up, joined the board, mm -hmm. and then almost 12 months on the board, put a proposition to them and they ratified and I stepped off and I'm in a full-time role now. Um, been there 14 months, so just telling the world what we do and why we exist. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you do? We exist for our counselling for children that are diagnosed with cancer and uh, it looks a tough environment, um, you know, from day one through to 15, 18 predominantly. Um, it turns your life upside down and our clinical psychologists and family support are there to take them all the way through that journey, hopefully through treatment and out into remission, but sadly and unfortunately through bereavement. You know, there's not too many people, I guess, in the community that aren't touched in some way with a family member or a friend having cancer. Yeah. And, and that's one element, it's, it's, and it's very sad, but at an adult stage, you can, you can deal with it a lot better. I, I just feel, I think everyone feels so helpless when there's a a child involved. Yeah. You, you just, you, you can't do enough for them. They don't understand what's happening to them. It's a really valid point, Poppy, too, because there's, um, if I use again our president's son, Thomas, um, he was diagnosed at eight months old. Right. So he's grown up. So we talk coffee, mm. he talks cancer. Yeah. So he doesn't know. He just knows that he has to have treatment mm. to stay well. So he doesn't know the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And that's where our counsellors, and they're there to support siblings, family, um, and extended family. Jamo, is it hard educating people on how to deal with cancer? I mean, not just the, the parents and the friends, but even the people that work in that ward. I mean, at times they're busy, they're stressed. I mean, yeah. they could make the wrong comment at the wrong time to someone that's going through that. I mean, it's a, it just seems like a world of people that you have to get to to, to tell them, or not to tell them, but to give them the right advice on how to deal with those yeah. people. Yeah, it's... If you don't know about us, it's actually really good. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to close our doors, but we can't. Demand is there. So on average, 60 plus children get newly diagnosed every year. Another 10 to 20 might relapse and mm -hmm. a dozen or 15 will pass. So our back book of clients gets larger and larger. So there's a greater demand, um, but it is. And we've got an ambassador in Travis Boak, Port Adelaide captain. Yeah. Um, and it's sadly through his dad passing when he was young and two sisters that um, he is an amazing ambassador and he knows that the point that you raised to mm -hmm. feel like he goes into the hospital and if a mother or father or family say look my daughter or son mm -hmm. is terminal and will pass in three or four months he drops to a level he knows it he says the right things he understands it so yeah it's a uh, it's really challenging you know what's intriguing about this situation i think jamo and phil is that it's an environment where which is a bit unique in the sense that you can have a goal in most sports or in most businesses. You want to achieve certain things. In this, though, it's the cancelling process is a there's no reward really yeah. for it at all. I mean, it's a it's a tough emotional uh, journey, yeah. and, and there is there's nothing on the end of it other than heartbreak in a lot of cases. Well, I think you know, having the sporting background, you possibly used a sports psychologist and you sort of share what you do and you vent and they give you some advice and support. I mean, that's what they do, but it's just on a, it's, there's a life at the end of it. Yes. Know, as opposed to a, a leather football or basketball. Yeah. I, I guess in that, and we're guessing because we don't know, your, your business is to try and minimise the damage at the end to the people that have to move on with their lives. Yep. And that's probably the process that this tries to help them with is to get them used to doing that. Now, let, let's get on something positive because yep. it's such a painful thing to talk about. Yep. The ultimate pie challenge is out at the moment. Jamo, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, look, it's not dissimilar to the ice bucket challenge. Um, so what we're trying to do is actually bring it down to a level where you've got children in a hospital that uh, are going through a journey, mm -hmm. um, unwell, sick, tubes hanging out and potentially scared of what's ahead. And um, if they could pie a doctor, a nurse, a friend, a family, just the smile and laughter brings yeah. their face for just a minute or two. Mm -hmm. um, if everyone gives a little, it'll be a lot, you know, with $1, $2 donation, lots of people do it. So take a pie, 
um, nominate three people, make a small donation, and then move it on. I just went through this, uh, Poppy, as a matter of fact. You did. Uh, last weekend, I grabbed Neil Curley, and uh, Jamo and I went down to Adelaide Oval, mm -hmm. and I had to pie Neil yeah, Curley. Think, now, yeah, I don't mind telling you, yeah, we can get a look I at it right down. here. Yeah. Jamo, who actually yeah. knows yeah. Curls, yeah. was a little bit apprehensive about this, <laughs> and uh, oh. I don't mind telling you, Curls was absolutely fantastic. Oh. Yeah. After I'd done it, I did want to create a bit of distance. Now, he did nominate three fairly solid names. Yeah, look, he, um, Sam Newman was fantastic. Um, so we're yet to, to nail him, but I'm sure he'll partake. David Hayes and Max Bashir. So it's sort of getting to those people to actually do it, and then they pass it on in their circles okay. and their work. Yeah, so we thought, Poppy, perhaps you could uh, lead the charge on being so I told you how much uh, Before I got here, I told you how much time I took on my hair today, and I think it looks as close to perfect as it's been for a long time. It well, goes that's... forward a lot, though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I do. It, it's, it's getting closer to going right across. So we, we've brought someone in to pie you, Poppy. Oh, fantastic. So if Libby could I've just never seen so the This is going to be the highlight of my day. Thank you so much for uh, bringing yeah. this to me. You're so... <laughs> <laughs> Was that how it was supposed to go? <laughs> well, I think Libby's done an exceptional job. It possibly went a little bit better than we'd hoped. Yeah, uh... With this, Poppy, you have to nominate... I can't even... Where's my eye? <laughs> You have to nominate three people to be pied. No worries. Well, look, Phil, I, um, <laughs> Phil, I actually, I'm not even sure what camera I'm on because I can't see a thing. I'm not hoping yeah, you can understand me. You're looking good, though. You are looking good. I nominate Wayne Carey. Wow. Well, that's a big one. Yep. Yep. I nominate current Carlton CEO Stephen Trigg. That's a good one. And two blokes that have been nominated that haven't done it are going to do it. Andrew Jarman. I can't breathe through my nose. Oh, and Don Cassisi. <laughs> so they're the people that I'm nominating. Someone help me, please. You got a bit of white, Poppy? Give me a, bit of a, give me a little you, bit of white. Now, Jamie, why is wiping off? Of course, you still hold your job at the ABC as commentator. Yep. Uh, the Crow season so far, how have you seen it? Yeah, look, it's um, it's been really positive, Phil. Uh, um, I think sure. certainly from... Uh, the circumstances in which we had to appoint a new coach last year. It's good stuff, isn't it? I don't know. I've been happy. You smell really fresh now, though, too. I thought it was one of those banana cream pies that Gilligan used to have. Um, and we've, you know, picked up some, uh, some new players and have added to the group. And I think um, through the unfortunate circumstances last year, it's galvanised the group a little bit more. Um, enormously tough draw. We accept that, but that's the challenge of the football club. And uh, to this point, tracking pretty well. Good win last week against GWS. Uh, St Kilda this week, and then we've actually got uh, West Coast away and then a bye. So if we can put ourselves in a really good position, the group's healthy. Um, you know, we continue to improve. You know, certainly top four, top eight is not far away. Mm. All right. The ultimate pie challenge. I don't know if you can get close in on that. I'm up for 10 bucks too, aren't I? Good man. Yeah, yep. okay, 10 bucks just to be pied. Rob Popplestone leading the way on pies this week at Channel 44. We'll take a break. Back with more in a moment.